So we'll be looking at the jigsaw today. Um, this is a jigsaw, obviously, with a wood cutting blade in there Ouch. at the moment. Um, and I noticed that as I was cutting the wood, I was drifting and I wasn't getting a nice straight line. So one of the reasons for that is um, when I was cutting with my old blade, which is blunt, I was pushing and that blade was moving that bearing back and that bearing has stayed back. So that bearing should really be right up to the back of that blade just there. Okay, so I'm going to take that off. Um, just move that back and just do a quick inspection. There it is, and there's the bearing. Uh, that's moving nice and freely. Um, just gonna put a little bit of oil, not much. What we don't want is this going onto our work. I will be cutting plastic today. Um, I won't be cutting wood. Um, if I were, if I am cutting wood, I'd wipe that oil off because I don't want it on my final piece. Do that nut up. And this time, make sure it goes right to the back of the blade. Um, I'm going to cut some plastic first with a wood cutting blade. And what's going to happen, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a very, very rough cut. Um, and I'm not going to be able to glue my two pieces of plastic together because it would just simply create too rough a surface. What I want to do now is very quickly mark off where I want to cut. So masking tape goes on to protect the plastic. And also provide me uh, a nice clear surface in which I can draw my line. So trying to draw a line onto plastic, as you can imagine, um, I'm not going to be very successful. Um, so simple tri-square. And just you can do one straight line. Come back to the bench with a piece of scrap wood. I've had a look at the bench underneath. Um, I do have a nail here. Uh, this is the scrap piece of wood, but um, what I will do uh, before I do my final piece, I will clean the bench. So here we go, I've just got a, a scrap piece of wood. I'm going to crump that on there, something like that. Very quickly. Another crump on the other side. plastic closer to the edge that will reduce um, some vibration so that's my saw I can afford to bring it in a lot closer
don't know if you can see that, but that edge is not bad, um, but it does need a lot of polishing uh, before I can attempt to try and glue one piece of acrylic to another. Uh, and I'm not convinced that's a completely straight line. Um, and I, with a liquid glue, uh, I'm gonna depend upon capillary action to draw that glue to that whole surface. So um, it's gonna need polishing. Uh, I'm now gonna try a metal saw blade, uh, which I think might be more successful. So let's draw another line. We can compare the two. That didn't work very well. That one single line always helps close to the edge as I possibly can. Cramps on. So to change the blade, first power off, take the plug out. And on this machine, uh, there are two captive nuts just there. Uh, and one here. So I'm just gonna slacken those off. And that will just fall out. So, there's a metal work blade. So you can see this is for rough woodwork. Uh, this is for metal work. So it's a much finer uh, teeth and more teeth per inch uh, than this one, of course. So if we measure on this one, we've just got uh, six teeth per inch. And on this one, we've got 24 teeth per inch and I've only got four teeth per inch so I might be able to cut some hardwood with my teeth certainly wouldn't be able to cut any metal with it so here we go so the blade pops back in again making sure it's on the bearing push it all the way up to the top and then just screw it in And there we go, we're away. So, that out of the way. Power back on. Not comfortable. So what I could do um, is actually use a piece of wood as a guide. If I do it without the plastic in the way, I can cut a much straighter line. Uh, I haven't done that this time, uh, but it'd be quite easy to set up. So looking at it, 
actually I would say that's even worse than the wood saw blade so it's going to be trial and error folks uh, so here's the edge of my plastic uh, I want to glue that plastic to this plastic uh, to create the best possible bond I need to finish this edge which is not flat uh, it's still rough from the saw uh, so I'm not going to get a good uh, adhesion uh, to to the to the glue so looking at it it's not too bad but it does require a polish so to do that I'm going to use a combination of different papers uh, this is a P400 so P400 is a high number so it's very fine so it's got a lot of particles in, in a given area so P400 is fine a P2 4240 is quite coarse so I'm going to start with my coarse and work up to my fine uh, to give you an, another idea of just how coarse some papers do get this is from the belt sander uh, so we want to remove a lot of material we would use this one which has just got 40 parts per square inch um, so you can see on the back of the belt there it's P40 or A40 in this case um, so a very very coarse one we won't be using that uh, so I'm going to start with my 240 I'm going to use a flat tray I've got a piece of scrap piece of wood no nails or indentations in it I know it's flat so when I'm sanding away I'm, I'm flat, sanding on a flat surface so a little bit of water so we use the water because it is, although it's uh, a 400, it still is quite coarse and what will happen is the particles of acrylic will clog the paper and you can see them starting to come off, I can smell it, so another reason for wanting to use water is it does collect the dust and we're not inhaling that material that's looking pretty good doesn't take long must keep it flat and upright not tilted um, unless of course you want it tilted and that way you'd, you'd work at the angle that you'd want to but I'm doing 90 degrees today best that I can okay that's looking pretty good um, then my finer material Again, my P400, a little bit of water. Just work away. Just dry that off. So it's a look, it looks as if I abraze all the way along the edge, which is good. There's a little bit here that I haven't touched. Uh, so that tells me that's a little bit low down there on that edge. That's much better. I think that is now ready to glue. Um, so that might even stand up now. There we go. And that will just hold it in position. I will check that with my tri square. Uh, put it on the back, make sure that's 90. If it's not, okay, I'll go back to uh, some more sanding and get it so it's perfect. Uh, but that's now ready to glue up fantastic uh, and that's it so remember the, la the larger the number the finer the grit the larger the number the finer the grit so the fewer numbers on the back the P40 for example is a very very coarse paper uh, designed for removing a lot of material in a short space of time
two glues we're going to use today. One is this liquid solvent cement, which will require capillary action to form a joint. And the second one is tensile cement, which won't require capillary action. So now I can remove the masking tape on our sample pieces. So what I've done is I've used some washing up liquid just to make sure that there's no grease on my surfaces and I haven't touched them with my hands, especially the gluing surface. So the first one I want to use is tensile cement. And for this, I'm going to use a brush So I've got the windows open. Uh, I'd normally be wearing a mask, but better still I would go outside. So what I'm going to do, just brush the surface, keep it on that surface, uh, and try not to get it to go down the edge. It's a little bit difficult to control. Okay, and once I'm happy, Set that onto the surface where I want it to dry. Uh, great. And I'm going to just use a tri square at the back to make sure it's at 90 degrees and just let that set in position. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, I could also use a piece of masking tape for a larger piece uh, to hold it in position. But I think for the purposes of this demonstration, because the pieces are so small um, and nobody else will be in the workshop today, I'm going to uh, leave this. So this one is slightly different with the solvent cement. I can now, I know this is going to happen. Make sure I've got the right side. It should sit up. Uh, and then this time I'm going to dip my brush into the solvent and then just run it along there. So this solvent glue is, is draw, being drawn into the joint. Um, so as long as I've got a perfect straight edge along there, I should be fine. So there you have it. So this glue is sometimes called plastic weld because uh, it's not actually a glue as such. Um, it's heating up the surface, the two surfaces together are forming a bond between the two. Um, hence it's sometimes called plastic weld. Uh, I'm going to leave those to set and then I'll come back and I'll do a, a small test to demonstrate uh, load on it to see if it can take any load. And that's it folks, that's the end of the demonstration today. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put the link to the two glues uh, on the description below. Uh, and then should you uh, be interested in, in buying one of them, uh, please go ahead and trial them. Personally, if I can get a, a good square edge, good clean edge, then I prefer the solvent cement. Uh, if I don't have the time or if this, this particular job is not going to be seen then I might opt for the tensile cement so it will give me a strong bond. Uh, it's not so attractive as the solvent cement um, but the curing time is about the same. Uh, I'll leave you there. So 
So we just try the tensile cement. I've got uh, 10 pound in two pound coins. That's taken that really well. Add a few more on. Good. I'm just going to up the ante a little bit and put 100 gram weight on. There's 100 gram weight. Oh, very good. Try another. So this is a kind of test that you'd want to do for your GCSE or A level project. And that's taking 400 grams. That's really good. That's 500 and that's now half a kilo. So we're a very, very short distance and a small gluing surface area. I think that's the tensile cement has performed really well. Let's just try the same experiment with the solvent cement. So the same number of coins. Oh. Again, very good for a very small surface area. Good, so we'll now try the weights, see if we can take half a kilo. So, one, two, three, four. Five. Um, shall we try a kilo? Let's see if we can squeeze a few more on. So this is, uh, I didn't think this was going to perform this well. Again, so it's about polishing that edge. Getting it as square as possible. Uh, still hasn't broken. I find it very difficult to put more weight on, uh, but that's actually now a kilo. We try the same with the tensile cement. So it's all edge preparation, folks. And that is a lot of weight for a very, very small surface area. Solid. There's no movement in it at all. Very pleased. So if it's taking this much weight, um, my preference would be go to go for the solvent cement simply because I've got a more attractive finish. Um, Again, it's all about the edge preparation, getting the square edge and a polished surface. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you for watching. Now I'm really curious just to see how much load it will take. Um, it's taken over a kilo, so just to, as a reminder, that's a tensile cement. Uh, this is a solvent cement. I, I would expect, but, well, well, it wasn't much more than a kilo. It says right on its limit. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that, there are some gaps where I haven't got a nice flat edge. Uh, so it didn't bond to the complete surface. So some more polishing required there. This is a, yeah. And the same thing with the tensile cement. Do have a gap. Uh, but there you are, folks. I uh, hope you found that interesting. So the bond, the glue will blah. This morning I want to polish these edges. Uh, There's still a little bit of rough. Blah, blah. So I need to polish the edge of my acrylic. 
and this will give me a stronger bond to the other piece of clip that I want to glue to. So if the, if the 